Inside Figma, grid, layout, and constraints. These two main features may not be very obvious when you are working with Figma. You may not notice them by default. But these two features are really, really powerful. You can create some amazing responsive design which can save your time and also which can give you pixel perfect design. In this video, I am going to show you what is grid layout, how can you apply them, what are the use cases are there in grid layout, and how can you combine grid layout and constraint together to create a powerful responsive design. Let's check it out. Here I'm inside Figma and if you notice that by default in Canvas you cannot explore or you cannot see where is the grid layout. Let me take a artboard uh, by just pressing A and let me take a desktop artboard only. It is, it is not very obvious for any user to come and you know, explore that. When the right side if you look at there is a one section called grid layout and just at the right hand side of grid layout, if you notice, there's a plus icon. If you click on this plus, then by default, this grid came, which is like right now you can see it's called eight pixel grid. If I want to create a column grid from here, what I have to do is I will simply click on this nine dots and then one pop-up will come. And from there, you can actually select that what kind of grid you want to apply so if i click on on that drop down i can see there is a there are three category of grid you can apply inside figma one is normal grid which is like check boxes another is column if i select column you can see immediately my grid inside my artboard got changed generally when we do a desktop application or uh, you know web application we take uh, 12 column grid or sometimes we take 24 column grid so right now the count this is count so here it's saying five so you can see one two three four five and there is no margin this means you know there is no margin in the left or there's no margin in the right side but there's a gutter gutter means this gap between these two columns is the gutter and that's set to 20. now if i want to create a 12 column grid so i'll simply type 12 now my grid become 12 column and I would like to give a 20 pixel of margin both the side and I want to give a gutter size of maybe 16 pixel. I set the gutter here 16 pixel which is basically the 16 pixel you know uh, distance between the left and right side of this uh, of these two columns and now my grid is set okay what happened is I can actually create that grid I can create a create a style of that grid so again in the grid layout at the right side there is a four dots which say style if I click I can add that style and I can name it 12 column grid 16 pixel cutter next time when I am creating an artboard again if I create an artboard here I don't need to again recalculate what I need to do is simply I'll go to that four you know dots that style and I'll simply apply that and this will automatically apply in my grid now if I want to remove that grid of course I will click on the minus it will get removed if I again want to apply I'll go to that four dots I can you know activate from the uh, style panel itself there is a shortcut if you just simply you know press command uh, control G then the grid will get height you can hide that grid if you again press Control G, then again the grid will come back. So this is how you can apply grid. What is the uses of that grid? So generally, let's say I have one button which will require two columns. So I will create a button here. And as you can see, my you know entire this uh, hint line is basically you know, now suggesting based on my grid. What I can do is I can now apply constraints to this particular box based on this grid. After selecting this rectangle, 
in the right side you have constraints now at this moment the constraint is left and top and you can see there is a some there is a blue dotted line which is showing that this particular uh, you know rectangle is constrained from left side and top side but in left you cannot see any blue dot line because it's not taking the artboard's left uh, side what it is taking is the grid uh, you know position so if i just simply reduce the width of this rectangle i can see now this blue line is aligning and giving the distance from this grid let me set the constraints to left and right side and let's give it from top only and now let me create one more rectangle and you can see in between this two rectangle i have 16 pixel distance and because of my grid is grid and constraints are applied here i reduce this particular artboard what is happening if i zoom in you can see my distance is still same 16 pixel because it's you know calculating the distance of this particular gap if i don't have that grid in my artboard then what will happen let me show you so let me go back to the previous position let me remove the grid from here reduce this see what is happening now the responsiveness is not controlled by the grid because the grid is not there and you know the, the size of this particular uh, rectangle is also reducing but they cannot control the gap between these two particular uh, object so you can see the power of grid if you apply the grid and if you reduce your screen size from desktop to tablet and if you want to maintain that 16 pixel you don't need to manually calculate if you activate the grid and if you apply you know constraints on that grid one more thing i wanted to show you here let me uh, again activate the grid here now i can take one frame inside a frame because right now desktop is a frame now i can take one more frame here and i will create a frame which will have five columns okay now in this frame also i can apply grid now here i want to apply two columns grid so how can i apply that first of all let me put a, a color for this frame background color that color will be let's say this color okay now here inside this frame i want to apply a grid again i'll go to grid layout i'll create i'll select column from here and then here instead of five i'll say two and you know i want to give a margin of zero because i don't want any margin but i want to give a distance of 16 pixel again from here this is one grid this is another grid so these two grids and there's a distance of 16 pixel and this frame i'll create a constraint so i want to create it from again left and right this will respond based on my screen size and let me create one rectangle inside this grid which will have again a constraint of left and right and now this is my frame and let me create one more frame here just duplicate it we have a distance of 16 pixel this two as distance of 16 pixel now this frame is based on five column but this two rectangle is based on these two columns they have a distance of 16 pixel now if i reduce the screen size see what happened i'm reducing from there to there and let me hide the grid from here and if i show you that everything is maintaining their distances even in this one so the use case here is when you are designing for one screen size 
and also you need to represent another screen size maybe from desktop to tablet if you properly apply grid then it will help you to retain the padding margin and gap between the objects and you can create really a responsive design through this i hope this will be useful to your next project if you really like this video don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel i like this video there are a bunch of you know buttons are there at the bottom of this screen you know smash them see you again with the next exciting videos and don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions regarding this brief and constraints thank you so much